Welcome to EasyClear, your one-stop software solution. Our goal is to uniform the supply chain along all modalities into one platform. This is inclusive of Transnet, Customs Services and IATA, along with cross-border and transit into upper African countries. We offer system as a service that allow easy-to-use transitions between the forwarding, RCG, clearance, invoicing with disbursements, reporting and bulk interactions. Follow me into the agent industry with your host, Devin Few. Welcome to EasyClear Day 6, Exports. So for those of you who haven't seen the EasyClear web application before, uh, once we migrate, or for new clients, if we push you onto our web application, then it's quite easy to access just by accessing the website easyclearx.co.za, which can also be accessed from our websites of easyclear.co.za, and right at the bottom you get a login button. That'll also divert you back to the screen that we're looking at here. All right, so I'm just going to log on to the test company and then take you through the exports module on how to register an exports file. All right, so therefore you'll choose your company, your department, your username specific to you, and your provided password that can be reset by your admi local administrative user for EasyClear or just by contacting EasyClear directly. Cool, my password is very unique to me, so I'll remember that and then log in. From there, obviously, we go to the landing screen and we'll go directly into the clearing and export side. Now, for the exports framing, there's two different type of scenarios. There's one for the full export bill of entry that will take you right through from the registration screen, packaging, shipping party particulars, the supplier's invoice, tariff line capturing, your customs worksheet, SAD 500, followed through to the EDR. We also have, for those of you who require it and are, have approval from your managers to use it, we also have the export quick frame. So I'm just going to start with that. Quick frame uh, just requires bare minimum information. So in order to get a release, but that's in terms of your business, that if your business entities are asking you to print a lot more information for clients to full tracking, then please use the exports, um, exports bill of entry module. For those of you who've been given permission by your managers, then you're more than welcome to use the quick frame department. But please, as I say, query with your manager directly, as there might be certain reasons why you should rather use the more information portion. So from here, we can click on search and see what files have been registered in the system. I'm just going to open a recent test file, go into the quick frame, and therefore I can see what information is valid and pulls through over here. And then we'll just add a quick frame file. So I can see a transport mode is full, due to type being ELG. Your file number can pull from auto file numbering, or you can set to manual registering file numbering registration dates, and obviously your exporting consignee that have plus buttons next to it, so you can add them as you're registering your quick file as well. For transfer mode 4 over here, it's asked for flight details. If it was, say, for instance, 1 for sea freight, it would ask you for ship name and voyage number, 2 being your train number, 3 being your truck and trailer details, and obviously 4 being your flight details. So you'll notice how the screen changes per modality and requirements. For the flight details, they would have put in the first flight number and the routing flights thereafter. For each routing flight, those of you who are using or cutting labels, it's always good to put in your forward slash receiving date of that um, secondary routing flight, as well as the last routed flight as well. From there, you can also utilize the master and cargo carrier code. I would have put that in for sea freight because the master and cargo carrier code for the air freight shipment just relies on the master air able number. In this case, 176 being the prefix would be Emirates followed by the remainder master air able number. Your house air able number, if that is inserted, then your cargo carrier code would be mandatory. Uh, place of issue, Johannesburg. So I see place the issue for the documentation and the ports of load could be Durban as that's where the box might be physically being picked up from. Destination, where is it going to? And what customs office is it leaving out of? We have a description, package type, your, uh, your pieces and weight. 
is it hazardous? And if it's road freight, who is the driver? Once that is done, then you can also go ahead and insert your supplier's invoice detail. And once you finalize in your supplier's invoice detail, you would use the save button on top. And you'll notice that the save button kind of follows you as a floating save button. So you can press the save button. And then these plus save and delete buttons will appear at the bottom in order for you to add your tariff lines per each supplier's invoice captured on top. You'll note I've skipped the supplier's invoice in this case, went straight to the tariff line capture. Paying VAT, yes or no, what's the FOB values? And is there any additional code such as export permit certificates and anything thereafter? So from there, everything's put onto one screen, allowing you directly to do containers, marks, and numbers, as well as going to the print menu, run your customs worksheet SAD 500 and generate the EDR. Alrighty. So now that we've seen what information goes there, we'll press the add button because now we want to add a brand new file and we'll do modality one this time. Now this will be exports of imported goods. I'm going to choose my ERG. What's my agent file number? You can have auto file numbering set up for this portion as well. Uh, test Devon ERG is my file number I'm putting there. The registration date here is changeable. It's the only place where it is. On your exports module, you cannot change the registration dates. But even if you do change this date, uh, we do capture the activity log to say when the file was actually captured. Also, for the exporter, I'm going to say test Devon exporter, as I know that doesn't exist in the system. But to make certain it doesn't exist, I like to remove either the last or the last two characters, pressing the tab button, and I see it doesn't auto populate to the name I'm expecting being exporter. So therefore, I'll press the plus button because I now need to add this client into the system. I see it's already marked as exporter, so I don't need to touch any other uh, tick boxes unless I know I'm also going to raise an invoice, a debtor's invoice to the client. I can also mark it off as a debtor or a creditor, whatever the case may call. Put in the account number, but for this exporter for to be valid with customs, purely for the ERG type shipment, I'm going to go to the address. So we'll use test address as well as the suburb you can also insert for more finite printing of reports if you want to utilize clients per suburb within South Africa or even um, which province they're coming from. That field is completely versatile and up to you as to how you would like to use it. The customs code, I'm just going to make up a customs code being eight digits long. Obviously, you'll have your registered customs code with you from the clients and clearing instruction. If it is an unregistered trader for sea freight, as long as it's not land for a uh, land border post, for sea freight entry, I can also use the 707070 customs code, but then that will require me to put in the ID number, tax number, or foreign passport number. So I can go ahead and insert that. Okay, that's just a falsified ID number that I've inserted there and then press the save button. If the points I have inserted the ID number, but I've got a valid customs code, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then EasyClear will ignore the ID number now and just focus on the valid customs code there. All right, then we can press the save button on that. We can also be more intuitive with our exporters by pressing the plus button and clicking on the blue button will take us to a new tab on top, specifically client maintenance. Instead of client maintenance, you can go as far as insert your general client details. So this is the same information that I've inserted previously, now putting through. If I scroll down, I can also apply a client hold or a customs hold. The client hold will stop you from saving the file and with whatever notes you add next to operations hold. Or if you put in customs hold, that will stop anybody from creating an EDR on the, on the specific exporter, specific to whatever message you provide here, such as the client hasn't paid, so therefore we shouldn't do any further work for them until they've caught up with their 90-day or 120-day account. From there, you can also unlock it, and only users who have permission to edit clients can do this. So you can always apply the customs hold, give your reason. Reason is mandatory. 
So now we can see it's saved the activity on what is the situation the clients is hold, who did it and what was the date, which you can always download that to Excel. And then those of you who do have permission to edit clients, you can remove customs hold, allowing the file to go through. Just a short description on the left hand side. If you do have delivery destinations or pickup destinations, you can use the delivery address or the local LC details for specific reports you'd like to print out the system that don't match the exact client's customs address, but might mark off the pickup or collect address where you need to guide the drivers to and print those documentation accordingly. Data details is more specific to those who have edit details more for financials. You can edit the data details as well for the invoicing. Data profiles is in order to make automatic invoicing as well. So you can make a charge such as agency fee at 3.5% of total disbursements invoiced for your agent invoicing. You can also run with your permit control. Permit control systems is it import export permits. Is there a rebate permit, a duty permit, or a production rebate permit as well? Add in your permits, and then you can use the permit control system. But you will take notes whilst registering your tariff lines on the quick frame system. There's no permit control. So that's where this portion here more falls into the export bill of entry rather than the quick frame. You can also provide a credit limits uh, scenario. So if you do a financial credit limits that EasyClear is taking on with your finance application, we can always bypass it on XBond and we also have a bypass for export credit limits as well. Freight rates, if you're utilizing air freight rates, you can pull through your freight rates. Pastel accounts information, so if you want them to print out a different address or invoicing details when raising a debtor's invoice, you can utilize that as well. BLNS details for your TIN number. So if you know that you need a CCA type entry and a TIN number always needs to pull through, you can populate that here. Then we can go into defaults and I see there's importer, exporter, bill of entry defaults. So say for instance, when the transformer is one, what would the onward transfer mode be? And also when you select ERG, um, what is the standard CPC code you're gonna choose by default? The default customs entry place, as well as what will the default payment code be. So under this regard, I know for this client, I'm always going to go through the commodity quote office because they want me to deliver to a specific destination always. Okay. If I don't press save, none of that information will save. So just remember that when you are making changes to press save, we can go over to the exports or defaults, where over here you can specify what the UCR number is going to be. And then during for each UCR number that has to be unique, you can always just generate the UCR number based on this and then edit the UCR number thereafter. So it's always in a similar format where you'll just change probably the supplier's invoice. Is there a bank name? So what will the default UCR information be or the financial information be for the default bank? Default MICR number. Do they have a payment terms? For the transaction, it's always going to be in a 30-day account or 188-day accounts, NEP or advanced. Is there a bank name two or MRCR name two? Payment days two, and further more to that, what is the bank account number? Default transaction currency code, so I can always maybe just populate ZAR in there if I wanted that to pull through. And receiving bank advanced payments AD code. All your actual bank code as well. So there, if you just say this one will always be First National Bank, you can pull that through. And you can also give them a default AFT code if you know customs are looking for your agent representing your foreign trader. So I'm just going to press save on that for ZAR and First National Bank. We have further defaults there like manifest supplier for the defaults. Common defaults is where you'd be linking your product library most commonly or how um, if you're grouping tariffs and consolidating them, what is the conditions it's going to group by when you have static certificates, the first two, four, or six digits, as well as if you're using bond book for bond stores within EasyClear, you can actually force the bond book selections, allowing users to specify that they have to remove from a bond book instead of 
just typing out what the tariff code is going to be. We also have Awable defaults and marine insurance for the markup, and then the premium can be set elsewhere. Alrighty, that's just to take you through a little bit of the client maintenance screen and just show you the ins and outs there. All right, so I've done my test exporter, everything's saved there. I'm just going to utilize a test consigning the system because a consigning in this case would just require name and address. So I'm going to select one that's existing. For this one here, class mode one, it's like going to ask me for my ship name and my voyage number. Now you'll see for the quick frame, there is no magnifying glass search for the ship name. So please, when you are typing this in MSC Ilona, you'll notice that there's no automatic search there. You're just going to have to follow what's on your master bill lading. So the voyage number, I'm just going to call this 9009T. Master carrier code. So for my MSC, I uh, will know that my master carrier code will be MSC, where there is a lookup scenario there. Now you'll note the lookup scenario. I know my master bill of lading says MSC. However, the link to the SARS website is looking for MSCS, as they use four digit codes there. So I just leave it as the versatile typing of MSC because you know your master bill lading is correct. So keep it to that, please. For the cargo carrier code, so I'll leave the selection there, not selecting anything, just leaving what I type. The cargo carrier code, if I know my company name is DHL, I'm DHL look, uh, representing the goods or taking ownership of the goods within the container if needs be. So I can specify DHL and then I'm just choosing which agent am I. And if you, it's not coming up, then you can just type in your agent code directly as it resolves like this. Your shipment date. So we're going to specify that one as a shipment date based on my master bill lading, 2022-09-20th. My master bill lading number, MBL-0011. Is there a house bill lading number? So we're going to just specify that one, HPL001. If there's no house bill number, obviously you leave that field blank. What is the place to issue? This is an export entry coming out of Durban. Right. And then we have place of issue date, 0929, my documentation date. Port of loading, that's still going to come from Durban. As I mentioned before, place of issue, you could potentially have Johannesburg, but your port of loading might be jo Durban because I'm doing the documentation in Joburg, but the physical box is leaving from Durban. All right, so you can tab through those fields. If you want to go backwards a field, you're more than welcome to hold shift tab and that'll take you back a field. To move forward, I'm just using the tab function. What is going to be the destination? I seem to like to use Shanghai. Now you don't need to type in the full name. If I type in SHANG, I'm still going to get two results within my system. But in my client maintenance, if I had to delete this other result, because I know as a business, I'm never going to use it. So if I was easily clear how to do so, or I'd go in and delete it, I would have only had one result. But because I've got two here specific to the same name, I do have to run with the mouse selection towards the arrow. All right, and then port destination Shanghai, port of discharge, and it's going to be discharge in Shanghai. And then the customs entry place and ports of exit will both be Durban. I would only specify Durban and maybe BBR for Bytebridge. If it's a transit entry or an RRB type entry, uh, transits into the country. I see our internet connection is a little bit slow today, so sorry for the mild delay there, but it's not too bad at least. <laughs> Your internet connection is a little bit slow and you found that you still need to save the file, but rather wait for it to finalize before you proceed to the next one. And at this point, if you feel like, oh, wait, I don't want to lose any of my information just in case. So at this point, I'm just going to press the save button. And then it will also tell me, oh, unfortunately, on top here, 
uh, doing quick frame, what are the following mandatory fields before we actually are allowed to save the shipment? So if we switch off validations and system, those fields won't be mandatory, but most clients and agents have full validations on. So please just double check your mandatory fields before you think the file is saved. The file will not be saved if there's still mandatory information missing from the entry. All right. And I also see that there was a duplicate house number in that file number over there. So it's listed it for me where I can just ignore that feature as well. But even if I ignore and save it right now, I've still got the top errors to deal with in, before I'm allowed to save the file completely. All right, so customs entry place. This will go through Durban. Uh, the mouse cursor resolves back to the customs entry place because it does a search confirming that that office code is valid. As you can see there, I just typed in the word DB and there's only one Durban in the entire system. So therefore DBN did resolve. This will be the test package description. So that's more likely a short description of your information. And please try and avoid typos like I've done there. So it's always good to read what you're typing in as you go progress. Package type here, I'm not using box, I'm going to use package, which must be utilized from the drop down list as per SOMS. Number of pieces, what is the gross weight? What is the net weight? Is the goods hazardous? Yes or no? If it is hazardous, please make certain you're, ha you're complying with the hazardous stickers on the box. Is there a driver in this case? Well, it's not a road freight entry, so I can ignore that. And then I'm just going to leave the forwarder blank as well for my export entry. All right, then we got the invoice number. So straight from there, I don't have to capture the invoice number. Let's just review. So I'm going to press the ignore button on the duplicate house. Try and press the save button. And then it's telling me invoice number is a mandatory field. So let me jump back down to the invoice number. And we can see their invoice number will be mandatory. So we will need to locate and capture our supplier's invoice. Make this 100 US dollars for this rates of exchange date of the 28th. And then the currency code here, we're using US dollars. Once it's typed in, it resolves that, converting your 100 USD into your RAND amount. Rates of exchange are quite high at the moment. <laughs> Right, so now I'm done that. I'm not going to jump straight into my tariff lines. If I do and try to press save, I will get a dog error because the tariff lines require you to press the plus button first. So we'll just scroll to the top, press save. We've done all mandatory fields. And I can see there it's saying CPC code is mandatory. So we'll hit the first one. Okay, so it allows you to do the first line and then the second lines for the plus button. So I see your tariff line would be mandatory at this point. So we're saying the goods are coming from ZA, but it's an ERG type shipment. That is highly unlikely. So I'm going to say the goods are coming from the US as per my supplier's invoice. If it was ZA, then I expect you to go up and change the top to be an ELG instead. And you can do so whilst you are editing the file. Cool, I was in the tariff book, so that just came up. So if it was an ELG situation, I can change the top Having realized it was ELG, changing the bottom now to ZA. So you can make the necessary changes as you are progressing through the file. I'm just going to leave that as ERG. Yeah, then the tariff code. Each time you click on the tariff code, whether the file is locked or not, and you press tab, the tariff book will come up. So I'm just going to insert my tariff chapter of 24, press tab, and I can see the tariff book resolves to the 24 chapter in numeric order. From there, I'm just going to utilize unmanufactured tobacco. So that'll be 860 cents per kilogram, less 85% with a maximum of 44%. So that's the calculation. If I want to divulge more into the calculation, I can click on the info button, scroll right down to the bottom and just see, ah, for exports, I might be an inspection certificate may be required. So please take notes of any other requirement types from the SARS website. All right, so I'm just going to utilize that one there. My FOB value, I'm just going to make it half of my full FOB value here. So my FOB value is 100. This item is just going to be 50. It's going to be located on the net weight. 
Uh, my full net weight is 10, so I'm going to specify this one as 5. Pay VAT, yes or no? It's an export entry. I'm not going to be paying VAT. And then to be coded, one or two, part of South Africa's trade statistics or not part of South Africa's trade statistics. So normally RIT or warehousing type shipments, I would have chosen two for exports, but everything else that actually the Reserve Bank can see a financial transaction across, I'd select one. Cool. Let me just utilize the save button there. And now I can see there's no further errors on top. My file is now saved. I can press the search button and just come back and just review my file is saved there. So you can see it is successfully saved just in case. Before we finalize the last tariff line, I just want to mark off the containers button. On the containers button, we have an import button over here where you can import an Excel document. Now this is free, versatile, and open to anybody using the EasyClear system. If you've got like 50 containers to import, you can maybe have them on Excel. Give us a buzz and we'll just show you this functionality as to how you can import it because we will design the template. Say your container number is column B, but your column A is blank. We would have at least told you column A needs to have at least one letter in it. So it's not a, C a proper format CSV document. And then column B can be your container number, your seal number to follow, container type, size, gross weight, depot code, and dimensions thereafter. So we can import a full container CSV Excel documents as well. And then you send us a sample, we'll build a template, add it to the system. And thereafter, you can just go and choose your file, bin the CSV and import the data as long as it falls in that format. You can also have multiple different templates for different formats of Excel documents you may receive from your client. Alternatively, manually adding a container, we'll press the plus button. It's going to close the CSV import here quickly. On the plus button, do I have a 20 foot or high queue um, container, a break bulk situation, or a 40 foot container? At the container number, I'm just going to call this one MAEU14565. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven characters long. Obviously, the last character will always be the check, the check digits, where customs will validate that utilizing a long division calculation, which can also be Googled. Is there a seal number? If there is no seal number, you don't have to go in and type in no seal number because leaving a blank EasyClear will automatically take customs regulations there and in the EDR message put in no seal number. If there is a seal number, is it mechanical or electronic? Please do specify the exact there, as if you mention it's mechanical, but customs finds it's electronic, they'll probably cut that seal and ask you to validate it or give you the opportunity to do a VOC. I'm hoping the latter, not the earlier one. Uh, the gross weight of this container, I'm going to make it the full gross weight. So it's a whole container used for very, very, very few um, pieces of tobacco there. What is the depot code it's coming through to? So I'm just going to use 07. You can use the magnifying glass at this point to validate your 07 depot code you are choosing. And what is the depot name? And then therefore, after, is it a FCL or LCL type shipment? And instead of pressing the drop down, you can either press 7 or 8 on your keyboard, and that'll take you through to your LCL, FCL type selection. So I'm going to choose my LCL selection under this case purely because I have one container, but it's going to two different parties at the end of the day. And furthermore to that, I can insert the rest of the details here, your digi class and your packing group. But if we do bypass that, the main other information that is mandatory for customs would just be your quantity and dimensions. So I'm just going to say this one's 10 by 100 by 10. It's quite the volume, so it's quite the volume of the package of tobacco. We can press the save button thereafter. We do a check digit validation within our system to make certain your check digit is correct, but always you follow your master bill leading towards what is the container number on there. Pressing the save button thereafter, I can see my container is now saved and I can add the next container if needs be, but for this scenario there is only one container. Once my container is selected, I can hit the copy function and have two. So I'm just going to show you what that does. You'll have two of the same container where you can just go in and amend the slight details that's required. 
or you can press the delete button over here that will delete the container you highlighted on. The orange button is therefore to close this pop-up. All right, so now that that's been done, we go ahead and we capture line number two because we have remaining totals. So when it comes to mass, your tariff heading might be, stat one might be NO, so we can't always measure your mass remaining total, but the main focal point towards customs is, did you use your full FOB value? If that has not been done, then we won't allow you to proceed to the customs worksheet. So I'm just going to run with that, try the customs worksheet, and quick frame should stop that. I'm going to press the print button, and therefore I can see Invoice and line verse values differ by 50 Rand. So you now, now know you need to complete your tariff lines before you can proceed. So it's a good check in place there for remaining values that haven't been used. All right, so for the next item, we can see CPC code 6000 coming from the US. The tariff chapter here, I'm just going to change it to a 25 tariff chapter. And I see the duty here is free for salt. The FOB value, I'm going to use the remainder of my 50, and the KG stats over here will be 5. Pay VAT is now to be coded 1. Cool, so I've finalized that information. I can also, at this point, um, I was aware that that certificate was required for line number 1, so I can always insert the certificate code and then the certificate value thereafter for this tariff chapter where it is asking you for, I'll click on the info and scroll down, the inspection certificates as well. So that's more than commonly a supporting document rather than a code and value. Code and value will be like some of your new news indicator, but that will only be for imports. So would you need an export permit certificate? And then what is the certificate number? Just as the prime example. All right, I'll save the line like that. Scroll to the top, and now we're going to print the worksheet. You'll note I don't have to press the recalculate button because no previous worksheet exists on this file. So when I press print now, it's generating the customs worksheet for the first time. Please take note if your customs worksheet doesn't come out, just double check the top right hand corner of your screen. You might have a pop up block that is a browser function. So if you do have a pop up block, just allow it. If you can't allow it, just double check with your IT as to why can't you change that setting. If you don't have an IT department and you're struggling with that, give Easy Clear a call. We might not also be able to bypass the feature, but maybe if we help you with a different browser that can control the settings, then we can go ahead with that, such as Opera, Brave, Firefox, or Microsoft Edge. I personally prefer not to use Internet Explorer, as the time and date sequences in there seem to fall blank on most cases, depending on what Internet Explorer version you are running. All right, so I'm going to open my worksheet. Now I can see the full preview of the worksheet over here and what the customs value is at the bottom right hand corner of my shipment. If, say, for instance, I didn't actually finalize my shipment because invoice details, there might be additional freight charges, uh, discounts, or whatever the fact might be, you can press the charges button over here. And then you can press the add button to specify what additional charges are you using. Is it an air freight charge in this case or an ocean freight charge? Um, what is the amount of that freight charge? And then is it a CIF or FOB value thereafter? All right. If you want to add and save the freight charges, you do so here. And then you can recalculate your worksheet again, changing the serial number, but bringing the changes you've done into account. Okay, from there, I'm going to go over to the SAD 500. SAD 500 screen will look the same as real exports bill of entry screen, where you can go in, complete your ERG situation here. Is there any depot codes? If they need to pull through any information further, uh, what my importer details is, my valuation code between my exporter and my rece recipient party. Is there endorsements, marks, and numbers? And most importantly, the financial information for exports. We do have a button here that also generates the UCR number based on the UCR format. So for those of you who do not know, you can Google the SARS UCR. But when Googling it, I find the best way to locate it is just to go under Images. And then you can see 
the SARS shared document for the UCR format as to how they expect the UCR format to appear. And as I say, that's always available on the SARS website or just Google it like I've done as well. And it can show you the exact format as to how customs always want the UCR number. Within EasyClear, I'm just going to start at the back. EasyClear will always put in the UCR number as M for multiple use. It is up to you as the agent to change this to S if you know it's single consignment use, meaning you're exporting it from here to its destination and that it is not going anywhere else thereafter. If the UCR number has to be used for the exports, import into the other country and then exporting from there again, they'd have to use the same UCR number. So it just makes certain that that is mentioned for multiple consignment use before it gives you guys an issue. Now for this one over here, I can see on the left hand side, I've got two, two starts off with the UCR formats of 2022 for the year. Then the country code, where is it coming from, ZA. The entity code is explained as the entity code of the supplier slash consignee 8 to 13 characters. So the entity code over here starts with the C, which would be your customs code for your exporter. Then we have the next item validation over here for the reference type. We'll see there that invoice INV is a reference type. However, my invoice starts with INV as well. So it's always best if your invoice starts with INV, remove INV INV that repeats twice because the INV is an indicator on the UCR format, is an indicator for customs to recognize this is the next portion for the invoice number. And with it reading INV twice over, customs would just negate that. Following that would be your actual invoice number and then your consignment type for single use or multiple use. So it's always good to double check your UCR number, please. Credit terms, if there's no expected payment, we can do NEP, pressing tab, and I can see the rest of the information has disappeared. It's going to go 1832 and press shift tab. Because over here we can have anything from a credit terms of one day up to 99 days or 120 if you want to go that far. Wasn't it an advance payment? If so, then what's the advance payment amount and the currency code? And then last but not least, just the receiving bank. So we'll make this one, it was ZAR and as, as an advance payment. So I'm going to repeat that, 1832 ZAR, because it's an advanced payment, so therefore I need to populate these two fields over here. Receiving bank, I can specify FNB in this column over here, but it is unnecessary, you can leave this blank, because this drop down here for the AD code is what goes to SARS in your EDR message. You can use a bank account number in here, unnecessary. Uh, box 28 VAT indicator to claim back the VAT and the VAT 201. There's no VAT in the export, so unnecessary. And then your fan number should pull through automatically. If not, please do let us know at EasyClear. And then we can save that because we don't need to touch the bottom section being VOC. The only reason why that's available is if we are doing a substitution entry, then we just need to put in the bill of entry details of the previous entry to do so. But generally your substitutions are for imports only and not for exports. Once I'm happy with that, I can save it, print my 507 continuation sheet. This is the ERG, so I don't need my SD505 for the bond control or the RRT transit control of your 502s. From there, I'll press the OK button, just ticking the box and pressing the OK, bring the print button. And that thereafter, I see the top section is spinning in order to give me my SD500 printout. So I can just run with the SED 500 printouts, see what information has pulled through, like my additional codes and values, my full customs values and statistical quantities. Is my name there as the declarant agent, the other end number, and line one and line two. And last but not least, I did tick the box for the 507 of the continuation sheet, so that is now pulled through as well. Alrighty, I've got three tabs open at the top and that's causing a little bit of confusion. So let's rather right click on those or independently close each one. I like to just go right click and say close other tabs to the right or close other tabs. 
quickly closing them, leaving the screen that I'm working on as a remaining. Thereafter, I've done my worksheet SAD 500, so I can go to EDI declaration. I can see I've just got one GT type to do and then click the create button. Once I've done the create button, I can go to these three buttons on top, EDI, send and receive, which takes me to the screen over here. From there, I can already see my description where I can see plus nine and original entry, history, if there was any EDI feedback by SARS, supporting documents, well, if you do, you need a valid case number issued by SARS. If I've sent this, but there's no feedback, I can always create a rec doc, and you'll note there's no limitation to how many rec docs you can send, but ignore a rec doc because your export entry is what the driver is going to use to go collect the goods or send the goods across. And in this case, the vessel is going to use the paperless release from here to put onto the vessel. If you do print the rec doc out and give that to a driver or the vessel agent, they're going to look at the document in confusion because they can't use it. So remember, once you send a rec doc, it asks Customs Computer System to return the latest EDI status only, and then that'll come back to my pending upload or my file sent over here to give me the next status in history over there. If a rec doc says proceed to border, again, please ignore that because the rec doc means nothing for me, you, or the drivers. It just helps return the latest EDI status. Or under description, when it comes back, we can also review what was maybe the paper trail of the EDI statuses. But that's as far as a rec doc goes, please. All right, so you'll notice, even though I've created the rec doc now, it really only processes one way to customs. So if I do that now, at this point, it does not make a difference. Now, as per all the other testing, if I had to remove the champ settings in the back end, I wouldn't get the EDI issue on top. But those settings are there for a reason, because we're just doing some primary testing on the back end there. I can see file sent. I normally sit here counting and just counts approximately 10 to 12 seconds, and I can see where customs have returned the EDR message. So I'll just press sync again, and there I can see the reject clearer. Now you'll see the rec doc itself has also come back. So if I press the history button right now, I should have at least received two reject clearers, but they went to customs at the same time. So it may have processed this rec doc first and then the reject clearer and then came back. So if I create another rec doc, I'm just going to get another reject clearer in my EDR responses here. From there, I can either go to the printing option on the right, print the paperless release, or preferably go into description and then see what is the rejection referring to. And I can see over here, because it's a CFRA type entry, the depot code is required. So you would have noticed I put in the depot code based on the containers, but that is only for the containers. There's no depot code like normal, it should have been in here, and that would have resolved the rejection. So it's always good to read a rejection, just understand it, and then go directly to where you need to fix the issue. Uh, duplicate house number, I'm just going to ignore. You go to click on it, ignore it, press save again. And that confirms that my changes to the depot code are now saved because there's no further error. If I do just double check this one here, we don't want to get another rejection. Um, let's just go to tariff line number one. But I'm just going to have to go back to the exports quick frame. It's jumping from the EDR screen back to the entry took me to Exports Bill of Entry full screen. So I can just scroll down over here and I can see when registering the quick frame, there is no depot field. So you will take notes I've inserted it by going back on this file, it took me back to the Exports Bill of Entry portion there where I could insert a depot. So based on that information, I'm going to recalculate the worksheet and then just make certain that the depot code is on the SAD 500 where you saw it was blank over there because there is no depot field over here. I believe there may be a change request in for that. I'm also going to remove the certificates because we know that would reject as well. All right, so I'm happy with that. That line has been saved on the green button, so I don't have to press the blue save button again. I can just go straight to recalculate my worksheet. SAD 500 thereafter, and as I mentioned before, 
the depot code previously wasn't there. But when I press the bill of entry registration screen here, you can see that at least takes me to quick frame, but from the EDR screen, that took me to exports bill of entry. So just be aware of that. And that's how you can also pre-populate your depot code as well as a quick shortcut, or just make certain it is here for your sea freight or air freight type entries. Alrighty, so I believe everything is in order, but now we recalculated the worksheet. So what does that mean? Why does my UCR information disappear now? Every time you recalculate the worksheet, technically your SCD 500 gets deleted. Thus, putting in this information again. So I like to leave my previous SCD 500 preview open, allowing me the opportunity to just copy paste that information if I specified the UCR number accordingly. We'll make this one an ADV again, 1832, so 1832 ZAR. Receiving banks, First National Bank, 812, save. Cool, that's enough information. And then I can preview this one, or in this case, I'm just going to submit it to customs. Please, if you are do a, doing a bonded entry, please make certain to preview the 505 or 502 before you create the EDR as a certain checks in place that needs to be done on those documents before you send it. All right, so I've created my EDR message. I'll go back again to the EDR send and receive screen. So you'll note that this screen only closes once you press the print button to preview the SAD, allowing you the opportunity to go back to the original tab in order to go progress forward to the EDR send and receive screen. Also, say for this one, if we revisit our rejection, let's just double check. Depot terminal code, this field is required. The other rejection, if I scroll down further, certificate ID. Certificate ID number supplied does not exist. Hence why we already knew that, so we removed it. So now if we send this ERG off, we can just ignore that top message. Wait the eight to 10 seconds, press the sync button again. You'll see if you're a little bit quick, the file status does not get updated because there is no response by customs as yet. There's a message received successfully. Cool, they received my message, they're processing it. And there's my release of my ERG top shipment. Right, so that's just a quick way to identify any type of rejections, go back into the system, fixing those issues and getting your release status. From there, it's always good to directly go into the print option and click on the paperless release. So at least you have a copy of the paperless release as per your release to put in the file and also to give it to the driver for the shipping line in this case. Alrighty, I'm going to avoid the quick frame item and then just go straight over to the exports bill of entry. For exports bill of entry, you can see there there's add file, copy file, add to console. If there's more than one shipment involved, you can register three or four files in the same given time. Uh, from client instruction, that will be from the purchase order management system. If a client loads the client's instruction, from, sorry, from the documents portal. Please, if you want a documents portal for your own clients, phone easy clears, we'll need to enable that for you. Or you can populate from the master file as well. In this case, I'm going to go back to the file that we just submitted here, because even though it was done in the quick frame portion, you can open the same file in the exports bill of entry. So we can go against here and then go ahead and say, oh, I actually want to update any documentation to this file. So this will be the same features to how you add a file, insert the information, but move to the next screen to go to your supplier's invoice, next screen for tariffing, and then worksheet and SED 500, allowing more information. But based on this information here, if I wanted to go ahead and say, okay, cool, I wanted to add a specific document, uh, one, two, three texts over here, choose the file types. I'm just going to specify other or customs worksheet, or if the drop down type doesn't exist there, I can press the plus button. Upload the attachments, and then I can click on the paper clip again, view attachments, or the drop down here, easy filing, and I can already see the latest document I attached, plus everything I previously previewed is already attached to the file. 
as a documents archive per portion here, and then I can re-download that documents, or as an administrator views only, I can press the red button to delete any documents I don't want attached to the file. Okay, so from there we can see class mode was one. Tabbing through, it was ERG. What's the file number? What's the export? So is there a client reference and consignee? So you can see there's a couple more fields in per the quick frame, allowing you to insert more information if required. The ship name at least has a search functionality here. So if we had to search for MSC Elona, you can actually see do those details pull through. I can see my master bill of lading information, my house details, my routing for my destinations, the customs office, my description, the package types, and additional information. From there, if I had to press tab right at the bottom, it takes me straight back to the top. So it's a quick way to move up as well. I can also go back and review my containers. Because this file is locked, but there's still an issue with the duplicate house number. It's still going to notify you there's a duplicate house number. But when you know this file is completely locked and done and dusted to customs, you can bypass that error as long as the worksheet has been run. In this case, it has. Go straight to the EDR send receive screen, click SAD 500, and then we can go backwards to the tariff, tariff line capture screen and supplier's invoice. But every time I'm on my bill of entry screen and I want to go forwards, it's going to tell me there's a duplicate house. So you'll just need to ignore that and then go forwards from there. Let's say if the SCD 500 has been done, you can use that alternative option to reach the end and just come back a bit just to identify what you were just double checking on the file. So there we can see we've got our supplier's invoice. You will also take notes per my previous session for the imports module. The valuation code is no longer visible on the supplier's invoice capture screen and for good reason the valuation code on there if required by your company we can switch it back on that allows you to put in codes such as n1 and n2 which allow you on the SED 500 screen to end up with two different serial numbers known as a valuation code split Another company would have used that and changed it back from N2, setting them both back to N1, but it's just a requirement for their clients who stipulated per each supplier's invoice, fair enough, frame one file, but they want two separate serial numbers. So you can use that to do a LRN number split as well, but we will only switch that on when we have a managerial request from your company to do so. All right. Inco terms as well. Um, you can use the Inco terms here just to specify what type of invoice or additional charge it is. But it's always good to rather put your Inco terms on the original screen, please. Okay, then we just move over. I can see there's forward cover rates of exchange. So if you are doing costing, it's always good to have put in that information now uh, for inbound entries. But for exports, obviously, there won't be land cost in there. Uh, but if you are dealing with CCA type entries, you can utilize the SE World integration as well. Okay, we'll move over next to the tariff line screen. There you can see my two tariff lines have been captured. Same thing applies here. It will just ask you for firstly, what is the CPC code? That'll be your first question on here. So you just have to have selected it. You'll even notice the file is locked, but the functionality of the searches do allow me to still search on the screen. But if I do change something from US to ZA, for instance, let me just close the tariff book and try and press save, the file is locked, so it would remain as US. As you can see there, it has not allowed you to change it. It's just the search functionalities are still uh, visible on the screen. From there, I was mentioning earlier, you can only do permit control from the exports bill of entry full screen, so there you can utilize your permit control, export permit certificates, duty, rebate, whatever certificates that you are trying to use the quota of. So therefore you choosing your tariff code, rates of duty, FOB value and weight, statistical quantity one, two or three. Now please take note if stat two doesn't ask you for anything like number of pieces or whatnot, please don't insert a value in there. Customs will reject that saying your stat two seems to be invalid. At least we also stop that on the worksheet. So rather leave 
anything that is blank on the left hand side, zero on the right hand side. Countable quantity in code, that to be coded, would you like to consolidate the lines? And as mentioned before, please don't use the claim VAT back button on the screen unless issued by EasyClear or told you otherwise. It's for very specific, very specific scenarios. The claim VAT back option for VAT 201 for imports you would do on your um, SED screen itself. Right, additional information can be utilized such as part numbers. So you can see the difference between the quick frame towards your normal export pool of entry, where we ask you for even more additional information. Now these are not necessary, but if you are using the SE World integration for exports, for your export entry to be their import entry, they can suck it into the SE World system. This information would be required. And then obviously any additional codes and values. If your CPC code doesn't end in double zero, you would have been required to insert your XMRN details, not necessary to warehousing, but it could have been a repair and return type scenario. Uh, if you are using previous MRN details to link your exports back to your import or vice versa. If there's any provisional payments, not available on the quick frame, but is available on the full uh, export clearance file. And then last but not least, what is the final SE World details? And we can help you populate these details if needs be. Okay, once that's done, again, you would just run your customs worksheets, SAD 500, and then create the EDR message again. I'm just going to jump to the SAD 500 because even if we try and recalculate the worksheet in this case, we can't. The file is locked, it's submitted to customs and released. I can see there, there's my one duty type. I can do an ERG ELG split entry if I split my tariff lines between two different duty types, then I'd have two different serial numbers. If, say, for instance, you did do an ELG ERG entry, but you forgot the ERG part on the original entry, you cannot do a, a VOC to add that missing duty type because what does that VOC have to link backwards to? There was no original ERG, or in this case, ELG. Um, so you can't just do a VOC to include an ELG type entry. Please make sure that you frame the ELG separately if you forgot to do it in the first place. Right, then from there, I can always go ahead and reprint my documents. I can see my UCR information did pull through from the quick frame perfectly fine. And then this is the only other screen that will specify e-commerce on top instead of the three dots to access the EDR send and receive button, where all other screens are those three little lines over there where you can go to the EDR send receive portion. And again, from here, you can go to the print menu and print your paperless release, but also at the same time, the blue inbox button on top allows you to see who did the latest EDR message, what was the status, and what time was that? So it's always a good way to open the file in itself. Alrighty, that concludes the exports training. Once we do the exports VOC training, I will be utilizing the same file and just going over the scenario again, explaining the ERG ELG edition, why that's a complication, and also just how to do a basic voucher correction changing multitudes of information and just make it certain it's correct and also how many VOCs you can do, what happens when you do a VOC on top of VOC without the original VOC being finalized. Sounds a bit confusing but I'll take you step by step through that to show you the complications that why customs don't allow it as to why EasyClear doesn't allow that either. So there's always the right way forward only. Cool, thank you very much for your time. Now for now.